Javier, it's good to have you here. TFT podcast, first episode in the new setup. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to chat with you because we obviously haven't talked in a, in a long time. Oh yeah, like four years, something like that. Yeah, and I've been, I've been waiting, I've been making him wait to talk to me because I wanna just get it all out like on the pod. I wanna completely like get us on the, get us caught up, you know, cause we, we literally haven't talked in, I guess what, it's like four years? Something like that, yeah, it's been a long time. <sighs> Dude, and a lot's changed. Oh, dude, so much. It's crazy. Yeah. So, so tell me, four years ago, right, like thinking of the where we were, right, give, you, give, give the people some background story, right, of where we actually met. Yeah, so we met, um, we met in New York uh, at a five-day course that we took, right? Um, I flew out there, and then Angela was there. We met up, and, you know, everything was great. You know, everything was great. Uh, the course went well. I remember, you know, everybody after that, we thought we were going to be millionaires, you know, <laughs> the next week. We man. had such high ambitions. Yeah, the highest expectations, man, coming uh, out of that. But, um, yeah, I think we Zoom called for a couple of weeks after that. We stayed in touch. You know, mm-hmm. we were, you know, doing chart analysis. Everyone was trying like to you know, make it happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, but, yeah, man, I remember we thought, I especially thought, man, I was like, yeah. You were having some success, though, right after, right? I mean, you know, it, it's, it's that point when you have success, but you don't, you know, post your losses. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was having some good days, but I was having some bad days as well. Um, and big thing, wins and big losses. Big wins and big losses. And the thing back then was especially um, they didn't really teach good risk management. You know what I mean? None. None. <laughs> you know, I remember, <laughs> you know, it was, oh, if you got $1,000 in your account, you know, you place one lot. It's like, well, that's... For those watching this, if you go back, uh, the, the five-day course was with QBanks. If you go back, look at his page. Um, I think it was like, was it 2020 or something? I don't even know. 2019, maybe? 2019, I think. Yeah, it's maybe, I think it was like May of 2019. You'll, you'll see a, a picture of us in the group, in the group photo. Um, and yeah, it was an interesting five-day course. It was, people were pumped. Like people, we had a good group at that course. Yeah, we did it was, for it sure. It was fun. Like I will say it was... It was a fun time, like, um, and it was certainly the beginning. I mean, it was the beginning for me with Forex. I had only started, uh, you know, learning about five months before that. That's when I started everything, just learning online. When did you get into it before? I think I was a year prior to that, a little bit more than a year prior to that. Um, I took somebody else's course before that, but they, um, it was all indicator based. I think Hughes course was the first course that I took that actually shot that actually showed proper, you know, technical analysis, even though as basic as it is, you know, that's really all you needed. Yeah, I'll say this about his course. It was uh, it was like pretty cut and dry. Like he taught technicals. The technicals weren't terrible. Like they were good. Right. I think they were for a foundational course for TA. Like it was good. And then, you know, he, he provided some juice to it because it was all motivation, you know, yeah, yeah. motivation and then and confidence and speaking some psychology and I think he, he captivated the, the minds of a lot of people with that. <laughs> oh, yeah, 100%. Like I said, you know, I was really, you know, focused into it motivational-wise, thinking, you know, hey, I'm going to get rich quick off of this. Especially, you know, going back, like I said, all I knew was um, indicators, right? So as basic as it was, that was all new to me. You know, the price action, the support and resistance, all this stuff. It was, it was but to your to point, me. there was zero risk management taught. None. none, like none, <laughs> none. <laughs> none. I would, I'd actually go the opposite way, and was, I was taught poor risk management. Yeah, you know, in reality, you were risking it all. Oh yeah, 100%. that's what we were taught. Yeah, we were taught to. I forgot like the terminology because it was so long ago, but it was basically like risk, like what you're comfortable with, or basically it was like if you're good, risk it all, basically, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, and uh, I had a high risk tolerance, so yeah. that didn't that didn't work well. And how old were you at that time with the when we did, did the I course? I think when we did the five to see, I was nineteen years old. I was nineteen. You were, you were nineteen. I think I was twenty three. That was four years ago. Yeah, I think I was twenty three. So we were we were young. I mean, you were super young at yeah. the time. You know what I mean? So. Around that time, like, what were you, what were you doing, right? Like, what, what, like, from what I remember, you didn't go to college, right? Yeah, no, I was working in Alabama. Uh, I was doing some construction jobs for the oil rigs, some stuff like that. I was working, you know, 50, 60 hours a week, and I was just trading on the side. I was, like I said, I was poorest management. I was saving all the money I had, $5,000 account, and, you know, go at it. Just going at it. And at that time, there was no prop firms, yeah, no, not that, not that I knew of, at least. <laughs> yeah, there was no prop firms going on because the game would be much different. 
oh. if the prop firms were around at that time. Oh, 100%. You know? 100%, yeah. Like, I can't, I, I actually, I mean, I don't know because I don't, I'm not coming into the game at this time, but if I was like a new trader coming in right now and there's just prop firms everywhere, it must be much, much different. Oh, 100, yeah. Because uh, I didn't go to college just because of that. I was like, all right, I want to trade, right? Mm -hmm. So that means I need money. So I need to go out there and work yep. so I can save this money so then I can trade. Yep. But, you know, if the prop firms were available at that time, I definitely wouldn't have taken that route. It would have been completely different. Right. That's kind of, oh, dude, that's wild. Yeah. Right, because you were working hard. Oh, 100%. Dude, I mean, I'm sure you're still working hard, but, like, dude, you were working hard as fuck, like, young, full-time job, right, just trying to grind so you could – the the goal was to save enough to have fund the account. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much, right? Oh my God. So so yeah, we took the course. Um, like you said, coming out of it, everyone thought they were gonna be, you know, millionaires. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, were, that's the truth. We were writing on I know I was writing on paper, like, oh, this is this is how I'm gonna hit these trades and I'm gonna mm -hmm. make all this money and shit like that. So, you know, give the people a bit of background from there. Where did the <laughs> what happened right like to give us some story on it yeah well i mean after a couple of weeks of reality you know <laughs> it sets in it set it set in you know uh, i remember i funded you know my my account that i blew like probably six seven times with five grand you know i was saving you know a couple of checks putting it in an account a lot of money to be fun funneling in yeah i think you know? i i think i lost like fifty thousand the first two years man that was just all hard work money that i was saving in and that was just in small account sizes because, you know, we were taught, you know, oh, we could flip the account. Flip the flip account. The account. Yeah. That, was such, that was such the thing back then. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, I just flipped this account. Well, I can do what they did, you know. We taught, we were learning the same thing, but it's not, um, I have flipped accounts, you know, but it's not sustainable. No. It's not. It's not sustainable at all. No. I mean, it's, it's just not realistic, um, you know, and it's not something that, it's the gambling mentality. That's really all it is, right? If you flip an account from 5K to 10K, you're just going to be addicted to trying to make that to 50K, so on and so on. And you're going to end up blowing a bunch of 5K accounts to make it back. Like, it's the risk reward on that isn't good. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the, the prop firm game is, is kind of interesting. It's like, it's kind of similar. But, but yeah, so, um, you were working full time, right? You were in Alabama after that. Did you quit your job after that, or were you still working um, after the course? I think after the course, I had a couple of months left um, of working, and then I was actually laid off. That job ended right there, and uh, I was like, "All right, full time, I'm going at it." You know what I mean? I thought, you know, it's gonna go great. Nineteen twenty, going yeah, in. Yeah, I think I was. I was still nineteen at the time yep. when I got laid off, and yeah, I was like, "All right, this is my opportunity," and. I traded, I traded, I traded, and it didn't go. It didn't go as I thought it would. And what were what were like your parents saying at this time? You know, surprisingly, you know, that's one of the good things is my parents have been supportive all the way through, like all the way through. Like I started trading when I was in high school, and I remember, um, you know, I was trading the demo accounts in high school. I think I was a senior, and uh, I would trade the demo accounts, and then I'd make some money. I'm like, hey, mom, look, I made six thousand dollars in the past month. I could buy a car with this, you know? So yeah, I yeah. didn't have a vehicle at the time right. that I purchased myself. And no, but they've been supportive. She actually ended up giving me some money to fund my account. Of course, it didn't go well, but you know, I paid her back or whatnot. <laughs> Dude, but dead. they've been supportive all the <laughs> That's way. That's fire. Yeah, because I showed her the account. It was like demo account. I was like, look, this is a demo account, you know? I made six Gs off of it. If I had real money, you know, I could have done the same thing, technically. Right, you're getting your mom to be an investor. Yeah, and she <laughs> gave me 2,000, which was a lot of money for us, you know what I mean? For sure, yeah. And uh, yeah, it didn't, it, it didn't, it, it didn't go as, as didn't, I, thought it, I thought it would go. But, didn't go too hot, huh? <laughs> yeah, it didn't go too hot at all. God damn, well, you know what? You know, it sounds like you've, like most people, learned some hard lessons. <laughs> oh yeah, a lot of them. You, you know what I'm saying? Um, and from that point, you know, what What kind of transpired over the next couple of years, right? So you're 20. I mean, now we're four years later. W what happened? Like, did you go into a dark place? Like, did you just keep chugging along, right? Like, what was going on? You know, it. it I was trading after a couple of years and I still wasn't, it was on and off, you know, the success mm -hmm. was on and off. And were you bouncing strategies and stuff? Like, big time. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> big I thought time. it I thought it was a strategy. I remember at one point we we talked um I think on Instagram like 2020 something like that. Mm -hmm. I was trying this new strategy something about the waves and stuff like that and it wasn't precise at all. But I was bouncing strategy to strategy. But when the when I found about the prop firms, I think it was FTMO in, in 2020, mm -hmm. you know, $100,000 account. I was like, "All right, I don't got a risk, you know, 
10, 20, 30% of my account to make good money. And ever since I found about the prop firms, that's when I started risking, you know, 1%, 2%. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's all it took. And I was like, oh, okay, this is what I need to do. Proper risk management. Once, once you know, I found proper risk management, that was just, that was it. That's why, I mean, dude, 2020, some people don't know this. I mean, I was the same boat as you. You know, I found FTMO. I was trade. I was trying to trade. I was working, um, and that is what pushed me to have risk manage, like to actually start to do risk management. You know what I mean? Like I, I was risking five percent per trade before that, and then I was like, oh, you know, these are the challenges, the rules. I got to stay within the rules. I got to risk zero point five one two percent. You know, I started to take things much more seriously, and that I think people underestimate how prop firms are educating people you know what i'm saying like they're pushing people to to trade pro professionally i mean they, you have to yeah 100 like percent day um you know because i was trading a five thousand dollar account to get the same you know money that i'm going to get with a hundred thousand dollar account i'm be risking a lot more and that's something that you know we as traders we look at the money you know i want to make this money i want to yeah. make this money quick and um it's hard to get over that but you know when you get a funded account you could stay within the proper risk management and still see those kind of returns that you want to see. Now, um, so it sounds like you found the prop firm that started to teach you risk management. What are some of these like courses and strategies that you tried out, which you know didn't work out for you, but you want to discuss? Yeah, so I mean, I think I only took three really. Uh, the first one was complete indicator base was the first one, right? Um, that was. Not good at all. The second one uh, was just the basic, you know, structure, um, you know, technical analysis. Not structure. a big indicator guy. Not a big indicator guy. Yeah, <laughs> no. not a big indicator guy. And then the last one was based off of Elliott Waves, um, except the way that uh, the course I taught it, it wasn't, you know, done right. It was just basically, you know, correction, you know, impulse correction, no measuring, nothing like that. Um, I personally it, don't know much about Elliott Waves. I know people who trade it. They've explained it to me. At a high level, it seems pretty complicated. Mm -hmm. Also, seems as though if you understand it, it can be pretty profitable. Yeah, right? I mean, if you, I don't understand it completely, you know, either. But um, a lot of people, yeah, they're 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 pretty good with it. But I just circled back, you know, I circled back to just structure, you know, candlestick formations, support and resistance, price action, price action. Really, yeah. is really what it came down to. Um, the only th key element that I was missing was the proper risk management. So circling back to that basic strategy with proper risk management, you know, that's that's all that it took. So 2020 started to get pro started to trade with the prop firms, FTMO, um psychologically like what what changed like around that time? Like you did you get super excited? Like did you start making mistakes cuz you were excited about the prop firm stuff, right? Um at that time, you know, it was 2020, I was I wasn't I didn't have a job. I was just trading, you know, pretty much full time with my money losing a lot. And then that's when the prop firms came about. I was like, all right, I can make a lot of money here, you know? Um, so strictly FTMO. That's all I did. It was FTMO yep. for a very long time, just FTMO. Um, Great company. Yeah, FTMO. good company. Yeah, good company. reliable. Um, and I would pass the challenges. I'd get the funded account. I think I got funded six times. Sheesh. And blew all six until I got, until I got paid on the seventh funded account. It was a reoccurring habit where I would get the funded account, but as soon as I was funded, I would I would lose it. I was just so excited at that point, you know. I was like, "All right, now I'm gonna make the big money," and then I would over you know over trade, over leverage, or whatnot, and then I would lose. So that's obviously an issue, right? Correct. Yeah. Trying to correct that. Um, and you said you weren't so you weren't working a job around this time. You like were saving up money and stuff to trade yeah. the trade the challenges. And then was there a point where you like ran out of money and then you had to get a job, right? Like what what went on with that? Yeah, I did definitely have to get a job after that. Um, I got a job, uh, what was it? It was back in West Texas. I did that for a while and saved more money and just, you know, started paying for more prop firm challenges. So how difficult, like I'm curious, like how difficult was it to, um, I mean, you didn't go to college. I'm sure a bunch of your buddies or some were going to college and stuff. Like, how difficult? And you had this dream of trading. How difficult was it to see those around you maybe getting jobs, maybe getting degrees, and you're just like grinding on this dream, right? You, you really start to question yourself at that point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when you see the other people, you know, go to college and you're graduating. You know, you see your Snapchat. You know, you see all these people. Everything, yeah. And then you're like, damn. Like I could have gone. I could have, you know, I could have graduated. I could have done something else. And right now. 
still not profitable. You yeah. know, you start thinking that. But you know, if you really truly like trading, you know, I there's there's a light at the end of the tunnel. That's the way I see it. And if you keep grinding, you're gonna make it. Isn't that isn't it wild? Because before you, I guess, hit a breakthrough, whatever, right? you start to make some money, it seems so dark. Right? Yes. Like it gets pretty dark in the tunnel. <laughs> yeah, I did. That was, uh, I think, 2020 for me. It was a pretty dark tunnel at that time. But like I said, when, when I saw the prop firms, that was my light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, so 100%. it's so crazy. So during that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are in the dark tunnel right now, right? They're just like, what? Who am I? What am I doing? Am I making mistakes? Um, should I start listening to other people? You know, what should you, what is your advice to these guys? Um, and gals yeah my advice would would be you know if you really want to be trading don't trade your own capital you know what i mean if you're going to trade your own capital trade it because you want to learn not to make money you know that way you do proper risk management i really recommend you know the prop firms um and just risk management in general is really what's going to take you understand that you don't have to win 70 80 percent of your trades a lot of people think you have to win 70 80 percent of your trades you know if you have a 50 percent um, hit rate with a one to two minimum risk to reward, you're going to be very successful. Very successful. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, it's hard for people to put that um, into their plan is it just to accept that they're going to lose maybe 50% of the time. Um, I mean, how, how do you deal with that? Right? How do you deal with losing? You know, I, I, those numbers, just thinking about that, you know, I've ran them before, you know, um, 50% success rate, one to two minimum risk to reward. You back test and stuff or? I back tested a while ago. Um, I really don't back test anymore. Um, but uh, just if you just, you're just doing the risk management numbers, right? Of one to two minimum risk to reward, 50% hit rate over a period of trades. It's, it's really successful. So um, when it comes to the, the challenges, right? Let's fast forward a little bit. You started this, this brand, right? You have the yeah. hobby charts and then what's the, your company called? Trusted FX Trades. Trusted FX Trades. So what led you to now, um, you know, start this and go the route of starting a page and everything like that? Because I remember when it started, it's pretty big now. Yeah, it's it's yeah. It's, it's it's doing pretty well. It actually started because uh, of you, you know? You know uh, <laughs> once upon a time. Yeah, once upon a time. You know, I saw you were doing pretty good. I was like, hey, man, you know, we, we did the same class together. We started with the same basic knowledge um, in trading. I feel like I know, you know, something about trading that I could teach other people. Therefore, it'd be basic or whatnot or a starting point or some kind of foundation. Yep. And I saw how you were doing your Instagram. You know, I was like, hey, man, that's something that I could potentially do, too. And that's just how, how it started. And at first, I think we actually gave you our, our like, designer, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm designer. still using him. I'm still using the same graphics designer. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out Wakar. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, at first, it was all infographics, right? Mm -hmm. And then now you're starting to do the trade setup. Yes, yes. I'm trying to uh, transition. Um, I think Trusted FX Trades is going to stay mm -hmm. the way it is, but Javi Charts, because I have two. Javi Charts took off. It did. Key, it did. It I, was, I was surprised <laughs> how good it was doing. I was like, man, you know, tr Trusted FX Trades took off pretty well. I grew, mm -hmm. I was growing at 1.3, 4,000 a day. What's it at now? The it's follower like count? 160. 160, okay. 160. Let's go. And I was like, all right, you know, that was just, I got lucky. Yeah. I got lucky is what I thought. So. I was like, all right, eventually I want to grow my personal. So I started that one, and same thing, same thing. I don't know what it is. Wild. I don't know if it's a graphic designer or <laughs> some good graphics. Fucking wild, man. No, with your – because I remember your page was at like 12K or something. It was low, and then – It was like 2,000 followers. Or two, oh, no, it was 2,000. Yeah. yeah it was, and now what's it at? It's at 105, close on 106. Yeah, and the reels are engaging pretty solid. Yeah, they were doing, they were, they were doing really well. They were ridiculous. <laughs> one thing that I found out, though – um, is that typically when you hit around a hundred thousand followers, your engagement starts to drop big time. What I don't know. I don't that? know what What's it. I, that? I don't know. That's Same wild. thing happened with Trusted FX Trades, and it's now just happening to Hobby Charts. It's like um, the algorithm likes to push smaller accounts, and so then once you hit a certain amount, you know, it's kind of it slows down a little bit. But it's still doing good though. What's like the What's like the most annoying part of having one of these pages? Oh, my inbox. <laughs> my inbox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, what goes on in there? <laughs> oh, man, you get all kinds of, man. I get people saying, you know, hey, I need money. Some, I need $60,000 or, you know. Terrible. Like just a bunch of lies. Yeah. A bunch of, a bunch of lies, you know. Um, but, yeah, my inbox. And then they fill them. So the people that generally have real questions, it's hard to get to them. 
It's impossible it, in it, the it Instagram. Really it really is. Yeah. And I try to get to them, but it's just, it's full with a bunch of, you know. What I'm realizing now spam. with the pages that we have is like, if you guys are trying to hit up influencers on Instagram or any page, like big page, you're, and you're expecting to get through to the person, it's very low likely. Yeah. And if it is that person that's still answering the DMs, they are just gassed out on answering DMs. Like they're going to hit you up with the most mundane reply. Like they're, they're not going to engage with you. Like it's tough. Yeah. It's, it's not easy at all. Right. Like, and there are gold, there is some gold in there in the DMs. There is. There can be, there can be some, you know, a lot of people, you know, want to do, you know, collabs and stuff like that, but it's just, it's hard. It's hard to, you know, I started with, you know, making all these connections for the prop firms, all the stuff started in the DMS, right? Like started talking with people, engaging with people. Like some people might be watching this, like why are these guys talking about growing Instagram pages? Right. Mm -hmm. Because it's a trading pot, but it's like, you guys got to realize that trading is business. You know, there's business involved in, in trading and part of business is networking. And if you can network, you know, in the DMS, growing a big page, kind of opens the door for you to hit up people, other people that have influence, that have pages, that have knowledge, and they kind of want to talk to people that have these pages. They know they're either working really hard on what they're doing, or maybe they have an opportunity for them or whatever, right? Like a page hits you up, they have 200 followers. It's like, is this person real? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's kind of harder to open the door. Um, So yeah, I would definitely recommend you with the page to try to network with people and i'm sure people have reached out to you already you know asking you to do collabs yeah um and different things but oh man there's so much there's so much uh there's so much to do when it comes to having a page yeah for sure you know Um, like you were saying those opportunities that open i was speaking to somebody recently uh since i want to change um my content on hobby charts i want to do stuff more like this you know more in person going out meeting new people Mm -hmm. and um just more stuff like that. And, you know, obviously having a big Instagram page opens those doors. Yeah. The in-person is a grind for sure. But once you get it in, in motion, like here we, you see, we have the setup. This is a new setup Yeah. before we were just downstairs using, they have, um, recording studios. We were, one of them is a podcast. So once now we locked, since we locked in a location, now it's a lot easier to keep things going in motion. You know, we're obviously bringing people out here. There's some people that are local though, that are just coming out. Um, but I've started to realize the podcast is power, very powerful. Um, just meeting people first of all, but then you could use it for shorts and the storytelling is better. You know, people are able to just speak more on what they, what their, their story is and everything like that. I think the evolution of your page has been good. Like it was the infographics. Now, at least you're in the videos, right? Mm -hmm. You're posting the it's what would you call it, like a lifestyle type post or something? Not really to set up lifestyle. yeah. 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 It's more like just, um, you know, like a trading setup is really what it is. It's a cool trading setup, though. I like the picture that you have with the Lambo, the Lambo from the oh, Wall Street yeah. and stuff. Yeah, my, my girl don't, knows that I love that, so she just got it for me. I think she got it for me for Christmas. I was like, this is perfect. I yeah. just had it, set it right across my uh, Yeah, there's setup. something about Instagram that those types of setups and those reels engage really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. No, it's crazy because the, con- the comments on it, too. I think I got a comment one time. I was like, hey, you know, that stuff is still legal here in Africa. I can get it for you. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like the drugs that they take on. Uh, what was it? What is it? What was it called? What was it? <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. What was it called? L- Ludes, I think. Oh, I don't even remember. <laughs> I was like, oh damn. Yeah. This people guy's are, really going deep. People are big fans, you know. <laughs> yeah. That that movie was wild. It was. You know, Dude. it's it's my favorite movie. So. Yeah. No, that movie was. That was my. Uh, oh, that's still my goal. In the one line in the movie, he was like, "I made a million a week." A million a week. Oh, no, he, he was mad because he was just shy for a million a yeah, week. Yeah, he was yeah. just shy for a million a week. Yeah. Like, that was uh, my goal at one point. I was like, I want to make a million a week. That sounds like a good fucking idea. It's a good plan. It's a good <laughs> yeah. goal. It's a good yeah, goal. That sounds like a lofty, lofty <laughs> goal right there. But no, so let's get back into the trading, right? So you're a TFT trader right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you've recently got a payout. You know, yes. everyone that's on the pod has gotten a payout. If you guys are just watching this for the first time. Um, so I think it was like 10 K yeah, you got 10K. recently, mm-hmm. which is pretty, pretty fat payout. Pretty um, good, yeah. so what would you do with the money? Just still got it. It's just, it's just <laughs> <Yeah>. sitting there. <laughs> it's still sitting there. Yeah. You just pull it out. Here it is. <laughs> yeah. I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> nothing in there. Um, nothing I'm crazy. Actually, I'm actually saving just, debt. Something. Yeah. 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 Along those lines. Haven't purchased anything. Okay. Um, what I'm actually going to do is, uh, I want to go for your guys' max, you know, 600 K. So that's mm-hmm. probably what I'll be 
purchasing next. What do you have now? What account size? It's just a 200 right now. Yeah. Okay. I feel like you've always traded the 200 case. Uh, I moved. I, I was at the 100s and I moved at the 200s. Next one, I want to go for the 400s. So three, 400s. 400 is a big commitment. I mean, yeah, once you got to pay out, once you have some money, once <laughs> you, you know have some I mean? money, yeah. Because yeah. the name of the game, once you get paid, is to purchase challenges with that payout and you kind of keep it going. Exactly. To keep the, because it's kind of, we talked about this on the last podcast. It's kind of like once you, they said in the UFC, someone said this recently, once you become champion, you're like 30% better because mentally you're just, you're, you've realized your dream, you know, you've made it in a way, like mm-hmm. you've accomplished what you want to accomplish. And it's kind of like in trading, once you get like a big payout, it's like, holy shit, this is real. I did it. This yeah. money's in my bank. Like, I know what the fuck I'm doing, clearly. Mm-hmm. You know, so did you see that type of boost, like, when you started getting the, pay, like, bigger payouts? Or what was the psychology like? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, when you see the money come in and the money hits your bank account, you're like, you know, I made this from trading. You know, like, this money came from trading, you know, all the years of hard work, all that doubt that that uh, we were talking about, the, um, the darkness, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, it's, it's, it's nice. It feels great. And it just motivates you more to, you know, keep keep growing the accounts and get more funding and just keep moving up from there. It sounds like at this point, though, it's like kind of like neutral, right? Like even keel, like, all right, I got to pay out. But like, I'm not going to get too excited. I'm not going to get too down. You know, like you're trying mm-hmm. to remain pretty even yeah. with everything. Um, was that something hard for you to obtain that level of psyche? Yeah, it, re- it yeah. really was. I think. <laughs> Uh, my psychological mindset is what has taken me the longest to become profitable. I know a lot of people, you know, they can do it in a year or two, but you know, I think it's been six, almost seven years now, six years. Roughly. What did you do to, to fix like this? Like psychologically, like what, what are some, is it habits? Is it, you know, different lose things? A lot. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> lose a lot. Like- you know, after a while you start to learn. It's yeah. really what it is. And you, and you key everything together. Experience. Um, like I tell my girl all the time, I'm like, man, these things keep happening over and over and over and over again. You know, I keep getting the funded account. Like I made 10% and then I made 5%. But as soon as I get the funded account, you know. I, I blow it. You know what I mean? Isn't that wild? Because you make that much in the challenge? Yeah. 15% is a lot. It's Yeah, it's a lot. Especially, you know, like on a 400000 account, for yeah. example. Or a 200000 account. It's still yeah. a lot of money. Oh, it's a ton. Yeah. Um, cause 60K like, on a 400K. It's a lot of money. Because yeah. like my goal now, right now, is I'm satisfied uh, with 5%. Yep. Know, if I can get that 5% and close out, like that's what I did with a $200,000 uh, account. Um, I went for 5%. I ended up getting 6%. And then I stopped and I still had, I think three weeks of trading left. I had three weeks of trading left and I was like, well, I hit my goal. Um, I'm gonna stick to you know what I said I was gonna do and I'm just gonna close, not trade it. So what I did is actually I deleted it off of my MetaTrader and then I was like, all right, let's go for- You don't ever, uh, when you're up you know, 5%, you're like, oh, let me, let me try to get to 20. That's, see, let's that, hear it. That's let's what I usually do all the time. <laughs> yeah. that's, what I, that's what I'm saying is you learn from you know, losing a lot. Yep. You know? I'd be. I remember I w- when I would trade the one hundred thousand accounts. All right, all right, I'm up. You know, five five percent. I'm up five thousand dollars. That means I can risk four and a half percent of the next trade. You know. Yeah, you can. Really. Yeah, you can. Yeah. And then I'll still be good, and I can potentially hit twenty. You lose that four and a half, though. It's like, damn. Yeah, you lose that four and a half, and then it's like, ooh, shocker, you know. And that's <laughs> and that's when you lose the next trade of the next trade. That's like, called a bazooka. <laughs> you're like, now I'm negative when I was up five percent. You know. I could have just closed out and finished there, but yeah, I think that's the hardest. Uh, the hardest part about trading is is being positive and then being ne- going going negative. Mm-hmm. That for me is just so hard to deal with. Like when I was trading the funded accounts, because when you're up three, it's like oh I'm there, and then you start over leveraging and risking, and then you're down two, and it's like wow, you start being pretty self critical. Yeah, right. I think sure. a lot of people struggle with that. Um, so like, what are some tips? Because you're deep in the game. Uh, one thing that I come to realize is when you really need the money or like you like that money is a lot means a lot more to you. That's when it becomes a lot psych- a lot psychologically harder. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, I recommend it to people all the time. If you keep blowing these accounts, you know, go for a smaller account. Go for a smaller account and see how your psychological mindset. See if you can follow your rules. You know, because you're not so concentrated on the fixed amount. Like, oh, that's a lot of money now or stuff like that. If you this is a different question. If you were to meet like one celebrity in the media or, you know, athlete or whatever, who would it be? 
I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't really <laughs> movie star or I'm anybody. Not, I'm not too much into that stuff. What I'm are you not, into? What's like the trading? Besides trading, like you know, you're gonna trade all the time. What do you? What are your habits to disconnect a bit? Habits wise, yeah. uh, Oh, I got into golf recently. Okay. I, got oh, into, I saw. I saw that on your page. I got. Yeah. Into, I'm terrible still, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a hard sport. It's a hard sport. God damn. Yeah, I've been. I've been to golf. Uh, golf recently. Uh, are you doing lessons or just going in? I'm just going at it. This guy's just, I'm going, just at going at it. it man. You at least get clubs or you rent? No, I got clubs. You got clubs. I got okay. clubs. Fair enough. Yeah, I got clubs. Oh, so uh, you're in. You're lot. You're ready. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I try to go <laughs> as much as I can. Let's go. So it sounds like training during the week, clubs on the weekend. Are you work? You're working a job right now or no? Yeah, I got I got okay. I got a job going on. Okay. Yeah, super what's good. it in? What's what's like the career right now? Uh it's a, an inspector for the oil fields. Okay. What's with the oil? It's a lot of money. You're in big it. in the oil industry. There's a, lot, there's a lot of money in it, you know? And it's <laughs> yeah. right now. I guess it's in like, Texas too, right? There's opportunity yeah. out there with it. Yeah, right now and it's like um, you know, it's a computer. I trade from there, you know. It's pretty Oh, so it's remote. It's remote or it's in person on the computer. Piece of personal computer. Personal computer. Personal, personal yeah. computer. Okay. So how do you balance? There's a lot of people listen to the pod. You know, they work full time, whatever. Yeah. How do you balance doing both? What's the schedule like? Um, you know, I only trade New York session, mm -hmm. right? So, and typically, you know, everybody knows like, hey, I'm trading at this time. You know, like, don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> Your coworkers know. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. They're like hobby charts from eight to 10. Like, uh, <laughs> if this doesn't work out, you know, he's leaving. So... <laughs> <laughs> that's Yo. just where, that's just where I'm at. And I'm dead. I got a couple months. I'm trying to purchase a house, so I think that's really why I'm there right now. Okay. I think it's good to you know have that because I just formed my LLC recently, so yep. I don't really have that. Um, I don't know how that exactly works to purchase the house. I think you need like two years of mm -hmm. self-employed income, something like that. Okay. Um, so I'm using that to see if I can purchase a house, and once that is, I'm, I'm let's gone. go. Yeah. yeah so, so you just. Opened up an LLC for for trading or or what? That's, that's just for trusted effect trades. I just opened it a little bit late. In the just game okay, yeah. yeah. So the the LLC game is an interesting one. <laughs> Learning about the ins and outs, yeah, on how that works because uh, no one teaches about that. Yeah, not you know? at all. You yeah, don't learn. It's... You don't learn about that at school in school at all. Mm -hmm. um, so like when it comes to like taxes with trading and stuff like that, like are you? You're learning. Like, what questions do you have about that? Oh man, I got a lot of questions. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> I just did my taxes uh, for the business, and I had to pay like eleven thousand. Sad day. Yeah, I had to pay eleven thousand dollars. Yeah, it kind of sucks, but um, but yeah, I got the LLC now, so hopefully I can start you know doing everything correctly or yeah. better. I mean, there's a lot of ways to to work it. You know, with the LLC, we always say with the the accounts. You know, we should be purchasing. To purchasing all the challenges underneath an LLC. Um, this way, if you make money, you bring that into the LLC, right? And if you spend twenty thousand dollars on challenges and then you make forty thousand dollars on challenges, you can write down the twenty thousand that you spent on the challenges, and then you don't have to pay. Um, your tax bill will go from being taxed on the forty k to being taxed on only twenty k, and then you're gonna you're gonna save. If depending where you live, like let's just say forty percent, you have to pay in taxes. You're gonna end up, dude. You're gonna end up saving about eight thousand dollars by doing that. Yeah, which is wild. So it's like eight thousand dollars off of your challenges. Obviously, you got to make some money for an LLC. Um, but what's interesting is, even for me, like one of the things that I do, and my accountant will probably listen to this and be like, "Shut the hell up," is you could have like a business, um, you know, an LLC, and then on that business, just charge everything, like charge everything the LLC. You know, if you go to dinner with people, um, whatever, like if you have to go to the spa, maybe that's because you got to work on your psychology, right? Like any expense that you have, any equipment that you buy, any travel that you have, put on that LLC. And then maybe at the end of the year, you know, you declare a loss on that LLC. It ends up being uh, able to be used. You, know, you get a K-1 from there, able to use that to write down maybe income from another LLC as well. Um, so yeah, the whole tax game is is very complex and very interesting. And the more money that you make, the more things you can do. Yeah. Right. So the beginning is just how the fuck do I make money? Like for me, it was all it was in the beginning. It was just like how do we make money? I wasn't as worried about tax because I didn't know like how it all how it all worked. But then once one of my you know a couple of businesses started making money in like year two, year three, you start to realize okay, we got to start playing a game with taxes a little bit, buy a car, buy this, buy that, write it down, and then you can end up start saving, saving all this money. Because the saddest thing in the world 
is to make a bunch of money and then come tax day you owe hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah that's <laughs> it's not that's, even, that's not happy not a good feeling man so yeah, for sure. definitely try to stay ahead of the tax game but so when did you start learning about you know the llc and all that stuff was it right after you know forex league or yeah forex league is where i started to learn because i was doing all the i was working with a bookkeeper to do all the books and all that and i was handling the account the accounting for the business um so that's when i started to you know, once we started to make money off the courses and signals and whatever else, we were trading challenges too on there, trading prop firms. Once we started bringing in income, you know, that first year it was like, oh, let's just pay our taxes. And we did. And then after that, it was like, all right, next year, let's buy a car. Let's actually put all the equipment, all this, all this shit. We got an office. We use that to write stuff down. Um, so, yeah, it was just through that business. And then TFT was kind of the same thing, you know, it became this behemoth and the first year it was kind of like too late to to start to do things mm -hmm. um and then the second like this year we're about to about to do some crazy shit <laughs> like, like i have in my email uh carlos is gonna hate me for this but i have in my email right now we want to buy a jet and the jet is anywhere from five to ten million dollars wow and think about it i mean if our income you know, is ten. Let's say hypothetically, it's ten million dollars, and we finance a jet for ten million dollars. Technically, we're now even mm -hmm. on tax wise, so we're saving thirty seven percent on ten million dollars. That's almost four million dollars, right? And then we put down, you know, maybe fifteen percent for the jet, twenty percent for the jet. So we put down two million. There's one point seven that's left over that we're profiting essentially because we're getting access to that money, and then our goal is to charter it and to break even. So if we charter the jet and just break even on it, then we'll end up with that 1.7 million in excess, which will be interesting. Or if the jet loses value and we end up down on the jet from 10 to eight in two years, and we just end up breaking even, we just gained access to our more capital right now. So it's like a cash injection yeah. as opposed to paying the taxes and then you know just losing all that cash. So that's like a whole thing and I don't, I learned all this stuff from Carlos, uh, my partner with Funded Trader. Mm -hmm. He, funny story how I linked up with him was, and this is why people listening, like if you're networking, like networking is the biggest thing, right? Networking and like, if you're trying to build a business along the way, you should really search for people who can help you, right? Always keep your eye open. So with Carlos, this is how TFT was born. I was at my friend's shore house and he was at the kitchen table looking at an Excel sheet and he was running projections on how to do write-offs for his drop shipping business. He was drop shipping graphics cards on Amazon um, and making like pretty decent money. And several years before that, a couple years before that, he came to me and was and I was doing some drop shipping on, on Walmart to Amazon. And he was like, hey, how do I do this? And I was like, I don't got the fucking time to explain to you how to do this. You know what I mean? And I was like, just figure it out and let me know if how it goes. And he ended up figuring it out. So I knew as an entrepreneur that he was effective, right? That he could do, mm -hmm. do something and learn something. Um, and then he was doing the write-off. So as he started making money, he was doing the projections on how to write off his Audi Q4 or whatever. Um, and he was doing it even before I knew how to do it. So then that's when I knew that he could be somebody that I could utilize in a business because he had that mindset of like, how do I engineer this outcome given the tax code and given all these different variables? Like he was teaching himself all this shit pre chat GPT because now yeah. he just asks that thing and tells you whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, that's how TFT ended up being born was when I got the idea for the funded trader and I could let you ask a bit about this. Um, I went to him and was like, dude, like I have this crazy idea, this crazy model, like crazy system processes, like put it on paper for me, like show me on the uh, Excel sheet, give me 24 month projections of financials, like tell me what we need to uh, do when it comes to like automation and stuff, at least his ideas, I knew what we needed to do. Um, and he uh, gave me feedback that was good, that was positive, that I was like, yo, we should do this. And that's kind of how it all started, pretty much. Um, but yeah, what questions do you have for me? Because, you know, we kind of went on, we started in the same place and we went on different trajectories, but now we're kind of, we're in like the same path in mm -hmm. regards to 
you're trading. Now you have a page. You're yeah. selling. What are you selling right now? Courses and stuff. Uh, I'm focusing mostly on the signals right now. Yeah. Okay. And and is that difficult? The signals. How, uh, how's that going? Because I've done it, the signals it, too. It's, it's been going pretty good lately. Really. I mean, I do I do all the signals. It's just basic, basically off all of my trading. I don't have any other people going on there. You know, in times of drawdown, it can get a little bit tricky. You know, people people you know, bitch. <laughs> the, and the reason they do that is because they're over leveraged. You know, yep. I mean, that's the biggest issue with the signals is uh, people think you know that's you know every trade is going to be a winner. You know, so they'll risk too much. So I always put you know risk you know proper risk management one to two percent yep. you know per trade. You know, every single lesson I, I say it like that. The signals, man, is so hard because if you win like two in a row, right? Everyone's high, like everyone's up, and yeah. no one knows what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they're just like rely or no, I won't say that. Some people are learning, right? Mm -hmm. There are people committed that are learning. Yeah. But the majority are like newbies just trying to get signals. Yeah. And so the third one, they're just gonna put it all on the line. And then they lose and they're like, yo, fuck you, Avi. Yeah, yeah. No, it's happening. It's, it's um, you know, especially when we're, we're, on, we're on winning streaks, you know, um, I tell people, hey, you know, send me your screenshots. Let me see your results, you know. And I see too often this guy, you know, like $600 account. He made $1,000. I'm like, hey, that's great and all. You're making a lot of money on the signals, but, you know, try to stick proper risk management. I don't want you to lose your all the money you made on the next signal or whatnot. Because mm -hmm. the next signal can be a loser. You never know. But, um yeah, that's, that's that's the only issue with that. Let's hear some honest uh, signal provider talk. Is there trades that you don't give, right? Like, do you get in those situations where you're like, oh, I took a loss, not going to give this trade out, right? How do you deal like deal with that? Does that go on? There is trades that I don't that I take personally that I don't send out uh, simply because I want to give the ones that I think are more probable or the highest, you know. Thing, I, I take the riskier trades for mm -hmm. myself, to say the least. I'm going to put you on the spot. How do you rate those risky? How do you rate them, the trades? What do you rate, like, the setup by? The pullback. It's just really the pullback. If it's a deeper pullback, you know, I'll send that one out. It has a better risk to reward, mm -hmm. a smaller stop loss. If it, does, if it does get taken out by that last piece of structure, you know, all right, we're, we're not good. The ones with the shorter pullbacks, when I'm going for the trend, um, if I do decide to take it, you know, I know it's not the highest probable setup but I will take those uh, once in a while. And what are the confirmations? Because I know you used to trade crazy. I, yeah, I did. You used to catch some moves, though. At least I used to see, like, on the on the stories and stuff. Like, it was interesting. I mean, I, we, we don't got to get into that. Yeah, but, yeah. But what are the confirmations now when you're trading? Like, w when w – w what time frame are you looking at? Like, we're talking about, like, let's back do, in – Let's do – now. No. Now? 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 Yeah, now. yeah. Well, let's do back then, actually. Back then, what was it? <laughs> oh, man. Back then, it was just strictly, you know – support and resistance you know what i mean there's no candle confirmations or anything that's why sometimes i would get like these what we used to call which i don't really think is good no more sniper entries try to get the best <laughs> entries yeah you know what i mean you remember that yeah yeah the sniper entries oh Big i got thing. the best entry you know i used to go for that a lot you know um but that does pause real quick so looking back on that like why and how and what in the world was like convincing us to think that that was okay Sniper think, entries and I all that shit. It was it was it was really the community. It was the community that w when we were learning, you know, the communities back then, or I don't know how they are now, but um, they were really, you know, they like to show off, right? Yep. The flipping accounts, the sniper entries, and all this stuff. Um, they weren't so they wouldn't show teach you as much. They would just like to show off. That's really all it was about. Yeah, that Facebook group for Wall Street Academy was wild, bro. <laughs> that thing was crazy. Like, I don't want to say too much about it, you know, but I feel like yeah. that actually held me back. No, honestly, I mean, shout out Q because I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. No, uh, yeah, for sure. You wouldn't. He's part of my journey for yeah, sure. And yeah. he put a lot of people on and whether he taught risk management or not doesn't fucking matter. The guy mm -hmm. has intentions to teach people and he's – Certainly teaching people at some level, props yeah. to him for what he does. So shout out to him, you know, for just introducing a lot of people to the game. What you do with it is what you do with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But his Facebook group was wild, bro. Yeah, it, it, it really was. It <laughs> Probably really still was. is. I mean, I'm not, I don't, I don't look at it, but. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a while, but uh, I think, I think I might still be in it. I mean, unless yeah. I left, but, uh, but yeah, that was uh, one of the reasons is actually that uh, that Facebook group, you know, seeing everybody sniper entries and all this stuff is you wanted to do the same the thing. The only worst Facebook group I ever been in was this dude called Jet Set. 
I don't know if you ever saw this guy. He he's like a so. jet set lifestyle or some sh- some shit on Instagram. Mm-hmm. He was doing the ATM business. Oh yeah, I think I saw him. Yeah, yeah and I remember I paid pff, I don't know probably at five hundred bucks, thousand bucks or something, which at the time you know was a lot of money for me mm-hmm. for his ATM course. And the guy just like had a Facebook group, then like kicked people out of the group, and like it was just shady stuff going yeah. on in there. Like you couldn't get access to the course, and then. You know, they would say reset your password, then it wouldn't work. Like at least it's Wall Street Academy. Like you had access. Yeah, yeah. The service was like decent. Like it wasn't. No, wasn't service, bad. Was, service was good. Yeah, you know, all the videos were there. Um, access to everything. You didn't really have any difficulties. It's just you know, the stuff people were putting out there that really made you you know off track. Made you think management. that you were like fucking weak or something, or like yeah, it's something like, was wrong oh, with you. Yeah, you see yeah. all these people like why. Well, I should be doing the same thing. So yeah. then you would go for the same thing. But the problem is, you know, all these people posting that stuff, they weren't showing their losses. You know what I mean? No. It would probably take them five trades until they got that sniper entry, for example. And they were trading demo. Yeah, a lot of them. Too, yeah. <laughs> trading yeah. demo. Yeah. You yeah. know, it was like mainly all demo. Like yeah. everyone in that era <laughs> yeah, know, was trading demo. demo. It was a lot of demo going on yeah, for in, sure. in that in that stage of life. <laughs> yeah, a lot of demo. You know demo. what I'm saying? But a lot of demo flexors. A lot of demo flexors, man. But yeah, getting back into the strategy. So the confirmations was just SR, support and resistance back in the day. Some pr- price action, yeah. right? Some price action trading. Yeah. Trend lines or no? Uh, back then, I don't think I was using trend lines, no. I do use them now, um, just okay. as an additional confluence. Mm-hmm. Um, my trading really is ha- and has stayed simple. It really is. I think, uh, like I said, the reason that I, you know, am, that I make money now is because uh, my risk management. So. Uh, for entry confirmations right now, I only trade, you know, with the trend, never against the trend. Look for some kind of support and resistance, maybe some kind of a trend line, uh, bullish engulfings, lower time frame structure breaks. Uh, it really, like I said, it really circled back. Uh, I stayed away from all the complicated, crazy stuff, indicators, Elliott waves, and I just circled back, put it with good risk management, and that's really what worked for me. If, um, like, you got, you have students now, right? You have some students in yeah, the course? Yeah, I have a couple of students. I'm not really working on the course anymore, but okay. I still have some students. What um, new people that you've talked to, like newbies that are in the signals and stuff, right? Like what what are you seeing from people these days like that are just newbies? Like what mistakes are they making? You know, it's crazy because they're making the same mistakes, you know, that I made, that we yep. made. It's the same mistakes everybody, you know, I think makes in the beginning. And it really is, you know, first one, risk management, terrible. Right? Yeah. Second one, jumping from strategy to strategy you know those strategy hopper yes dude i think those are the two biggest ones but i f- i tell people all the time if you, you get most strategies technically if you match it with a uh, good risk management i think you could be successful what's crazy is i never deviated from the ta that q taught really never i i just at some point took that and just started to be self-critical and like create my own strategy Mm -hmm. from what I've learned, what I learned from that course. And then the risk management, like I obviously linked up with Nick and he knew knew a bit more than I did and he was teaching me what he was doing. So that helped level me up. Um, But yeah, I never did the strategy hopping. I never even learned another strategy until like two or three years in, I started learning this other course, this guy on uh Instagram, NVFX, NV4X. It was like institutionalized trading mm. using the VWAP and volume profile yeah. and all that. And it was like on the five minute, on the one minute. That shit was like exciting. Like to be yeah. honest, like yeah. it was like ex- exhilarating trading that. Yeah. Cause it was interesting because I was always a swing trader. Um, and then um, that was all intraday, like New York session. Find the move in the first 20 minutes, 30 minutes, like between eight and 9.30. Mm-hmm. Ride it out to 11. If there's nothing there, you're done. Yeah. for the day like that was some interesting some interesting trading but at that time when i was learning that i started to migrate and focus on the business side a bit more and then some of them started to take off and then it was like shit i don't have time to be trading <laughs> new york mm-hmm. session yeah you know yeah. you know what i'm saying um it was just it was just interesting so you were a strategy hopper yeah i did hop for sure i think um i did learn about vwap as well at one point from sean lee okay yeah, you guys crazy man is. Yeah, pretty uh, <laughs> pretty interesting guy. Um, I took his course as well. Now that I remember, well, I didn't actually take his course. I purchased his course, uh, but you I found never. A, you found a pirated version. I never opened it. 
Oh, you never opened it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that, it that was, works wonders. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it was actually one of those things where they had some kind of events, but for you to go to the event, you had to be a student. Did you go though to an Astro event? I did. I think you did, right? I did. Yeah, I remember this. That's why I purchased the course. It was only to go to the event. Mm. And man, it was expensive. The event was in Dallas? It was in Dallas. It was in Dallas, right? Yeah. It was in Dallas. Okay, yeah. I remember this. You met them, Aman and yeah. and Sean. Yeah, really cool guys though. Really yeah. cool guys. Okay, fair enough. Um yeah, I think it was like five thousand though for the course. Sheesh. Never even opened it. No. Never even opened this it. This fucking guy. I went just made a gold. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo. I just wanted to go to the event. It's really you know because, uh, like you know, I met you back at one, an event. You know, so you never yeah. know who you're gonna meet. Dude, you, you never, never know. know who you're gonna meet. Uh, you remember Justin Williams? Yeah, from yeah, that of event, course, of yeah. course. Yeah. Shout out Justin, great, yeah, great Justin. guy. Yeah. You know, I still talk to him to this day. Yeah, I still see all his you know food reels and all that stuff. <laughs> Did he have the best guys, food reels? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really good. I think you went out to go. You you met with him in yep. New York. I, I saw that. Yeah, we met up in New York. We met up another time as well. Um, and yeah, it was it was just so interesting because it's like full circle. Yeah, where we're at and I'm just like holy shit you know and he's I think he's still training but he's more doing some passive income plays with mm -hmm. some investing and stuff because he's got some money but but yeah dude super good guy for sure and you know he he also knows a lot of other people that are in the industry as well and networks with them so like you said networking going to these events is key yeah, dude it's not easy honestly for anyone out there that's got anxiety like that struggles with that type of stuff maybe you're an introvert mm -hmm. like it is not easy to go to events like it, yeah, it is it, right it, like, put yourself out there and yeah, stuff I, I i consider myself an introvert now mm -hmm. you know and i still try to push myself why you used to be an extrovert yes <laughs> you're an ex-extrovert yes i am i don't know what happened to me man i've just been stayed and closed in my office just trading and oh i haven't really God. talked out to many people okay so. fair enough um, but I still try to push myself to, you know, get out there and, you know, network. It's, yeah. it's, it's big. It's big. It is because you never know. I mean, even now we were, we were talking a couple months ago about maybe doing some business together, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, maybe if the time aligns where we could do some things at some point, it could happen. And that all, that all came together. Cause we went to that course together, um, the course itself was fun. Like it was a it fun. Was, it was. It, it was, was probably because Justin. Fun. It was. Yeah. It was just, <laughs> Justin was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Funny. Funny eyes guy. But just overall, the energy was good. Yeah. Um, was good there. So yeah, if anyone has an opportunity to like go to a course, and I'm not just saying this because I want people like to buy people's courses and yeah. shit, but like, listen, you gotta invest money if you want to get yeah, somewhere sure. in life. Especially if it's like an in-person event, man. It's insane. And. Just the motivation that it gives you to push forward, you know, even if, you know, you think you're going to be a millionaire next week, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's really good. It's really good. Yeah. I remember coming from that event and yeah, the energy was high. Like I was just like, yo, I was just around all these people who also believe in this thing, right? Like it felt good to be around a supportive cast and you know, a lot, a lot of people out there, their parents or their family members or whatever, their friends mm -hmm. don't support them. Yeah. So getting around those people, bro, paying a thousand bucks to get around people that are supportive and that have the same vision and ambitions can give you fuel for several months. Oh yeah, big time. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? So people underestimate underestimate that for sure. Like if I if I was somebody right now that is broke or just trying to learn business, trying to get going, my advice to you would be what you did, get a fucking job, right? Number 1, get a job, reinvest that money into self-education, reinvest that money into courses, into events, you know, into whatever self things that you feel good about, but mainly that education, because in order for you to break through and become exponential in your income, you have to, you have to invest money. You have to learn a skill. Yeah. Like you have to learn a skill. It's not, don't just think you're, I mean, I know everyone else oh, put your IRA and have a job your whole life and all this yeah, shit. Guess what? You could do that. That's a pretty mediocre life, but guess what? It's, it's sustainable. You know, you make some money like that's fine. You have a family and whatever. But if you want exponential income, you know what I'm saying? You got to invest in yourself. You got to risk money. You got to improve a skill. You have to be like a leader in that space. Like you have to be all in. Yeah, essentially, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You've been all in for a minute. That's been I the have, mentality. Yeah, like, I have all been. Along. Yeah, I mean, I've never stopped, never stopped grinding. Even, you know, like I said, when it was tough, you know, I've I've never deviated from trading. Trading has been number one. I think that's also one of the things um, that the paths that we took as well, you know, we both started trading and you took like the business side and I just, you know, stuck with trading. Yep. And now that, you know, I've I've been seeing now more of the business side, I'll, I kind of want to, you know, do both. It's It's literally necessary to do both because until you do both, you'll have to have a job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because trading 
the psychology behind it is so difficult that, I mean, sure, there are full-time traders, mm -hmm. right? If you have a huge, you could have a huge win next week, 200K, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it's like, shit, I have enough, in, I have enough buffer to quit this job. Yeah, you need a big buffer to yeah. have that right mindset to be trading every day, you know what I mean? If you just have- Depends, you know, depends on the person, for sure. Mm -hmm. I would say, um, like, I'll give you an example. You either need a big buffer or you need some momentum, mm -hmm. right? Because for me, my my situation, when I quit my job, I was negative 40K in debt, right? Wow. But our business was making money. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if I quit my job at that time, that we could make more money because I'd be more all in. Yeah. I'd have more time um, to focus on my business. And that included the challenges too. At this point, we were we were trading challenges for other people. I don't know if you're doing this at all. Yeah. And we had passed, I think, like 35 challenges in one shot on FTMO, wow. yeah, which our, was our, fucking our, nuts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah ver passed like first and verification, like literally fucking made it happen. And that, that we were doing that. You know, people were paying us to do that shit. Obviously, now I'm on the other side of that, and I'm like, no, no, no. But <laughs> yeah, you know, what I'm saying? like a lot of, I see people, yeah, on, like, like, yeah. I see people on Twitter. They're like, Angelo's a fucking scammer. Like he fucking used to do this shit. And I'm like, and now he can. I'm it, like, yeah. you know, what I'm saying? and now we're like the czar. Like we're like, no, <laughs> it's so interesting. You're on the other side. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. yeah. So but, like but yeah, no. Once we started realizing that, once I started realizing I could make some income. Um, and I was working a full-time nine to five job at a pharmaceutical company in IT and dude, there was just not enough time. Like I, I was working on the computer, but like, dude, they asked me, I was like leveling up and I was going from like an analyst to an associate level mm -hmm. and it was going to require so much effort to be at that level. And that's when I quit. Cause I was like, I'm either going to go to this level and be a fucking mediocre dude the rest of my life and just keep yeah. leveling up associate fucking director or whatever, or I'm going to quit now go all in while I'm, you know, still young, no responsibilities, just had broken up with my girlfriend, like literally. And I remember telling myself, I was like, if we break up, I'm become a fucking billionaire. Like <laughs> I remember telling myself that. I, was, I told Nick, you can ask Nick. I told Nick, I was like, dude, I swear to God, me and this fucking girl break up and become a millionaire, bro. Or I said billionaire, I was like, we become a fucking billionaire, dude. And then after that, we broke up and lit, I think you remember, you probably remember our office. We had the office for, yeah. for Forex League. Yeah, I, remember that. I fucking lived in that office, bro. Like yeah. literally sun up to sundown, quit my job, go there 8 a.m., leave there 8 p.m., fucking eat Panera in that bitch every day. Fucking had a couch in there, bro. Yeah. We'd watch Netflix in there, cuddle in there. You know what I'm no, saying? No like, job, no girl. No job, no girl, bro. No, just grinding. no distractions, just grinding. Just grinding, bro, yeah. every single day. And our fucking uh, Nick's dad used to come in and he used to, he was a, a jokester. And he'd yeah. be like, the fuck are you doing in here? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what, what, what are you doing? You got to figure, you know, you got to do something. And I'm like, you just wait. <laughs> you wait and see what, what goes on. I swear to God. Yeah. Uh, this guy knows. But, but yeah, you got to be all in. Yeah. At the end of the day, you got to be all in. I was negative 40. And then, you know, it was, you know, now I'm plus um, a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's crazy the exponential growth you've had, man, in the past, what, two, three years? Two years. Two years. Yeah, two yeah. years. Yeah. Two years. I mean, technically, insane. technically, like, when did I quit? I quit the job. And then seven months later, I started TFT. Okay. So you hadn't started TFT yet when you no. quit the job. No, I was working the job and I quit and we were doing Full -time FX League. League. Yeah, yeah, FX League and trading. We were just doing that. And then, you know, we were making money and that's when I was like, all right, this is enough. And then after I quit my job, that's when I just started networking like a fucking maniac. Yeah. Hitting people up. like, And then that's why I moved to Miami because there was just so many more people here to network with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I need to be accessible. I need to... Dude, you, know, you want to hear how I moved to Miami, bro? Yeah. I fucking... Uh, visited Fort Lauderdale on spring break, was like, oh, it's chill here. Went home, packed a suitcase, moved into an Airbnb in Fort Lauderdale. Like, went home, moved right away. My parents were like, where are you going? I'm like, see you later. And I moved to Fort Lauderdale, lived in an Airbnb with this couple. They, one dude, the dude was a chef and his wife. Mm -hmm. And we lived in an Airbnb, they had a spare room. Then from there, I found an apartment to get up my own apartment. And then I started, you know, building FX league. We were at the time doing some other stuff too, affiliate marketing, trading. And then, you know, the idea for, for, uh, TFT was born, you know, that six months, seven months later, four months into me living in Miami. Um, and then, yeah, obviously from there, it was just the <laughs> fucking oh, wow. I was under the assumption yeah. that, you know, you moved to Miami after 
TFT had started. You know, you had already had some, you know, no. good going. You wouldn't, you just went out there. Completely. I just went out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's the way to do it, man. Just full, yeah. full send it, and you made it work. You know, I feel like that pressure as well, you know, really puts you in a good position to, you know, work harder. And Dude, the pressure is, um, I mean, some people can't manage it. This, the pressure for me was, you know, I just knew. I knew that the opportunities would be there and I knew that I could exponentially grow my income. And I was just ready, man. I was ready mentally to take that challenge on. Like I was ready to sleep on the fucking street. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, yeah. o- it was over for me. So, but for, for you, you know, for, for the people are different personas right yeah. so for for you um and i even think that like for i talk to a lot of people and like dude if you make a couple hundred grand mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and all of a sudden it's like oh bills are paid this and that for a year two years whatever i have a business you're in a good spot like you're in a pretty good spot to go in and the key is you can't quit your job and then have nothing to fucking do yeah you know you got to quit your job because there's a business to run and then you can grow that business and start another business or do something else. You know what I'm saying? Like some people just quit their job and they're like, ah, now I'm going to fucking wear slippers all day. Yeah, no. And that's when you go. <laughs> yeah, when you go down. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, man, what other, you know, questions you have? Because we haven't, do we haven't chopped it up in a, literally a minute because we just talked over IG pretty much since in the in the inception we did some zooms and stuff like that yeah i think we did some zooms and then i remember you know i hit you up i don't know if you hit me up or i hit you up when fx league was like around 20 30k and we were you know ig from there but um yeah it's been a long time i haven't kept up with anybody besides i think just you really since there's really no one else besides justin i mean i don't i don't 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 remember anyone else no yeah just you know you and justin as well kind of crazy it's been pretty much just us two that i've that we've stayed in the think about the success rate of that 15 people were there, just me and you, left. I, know. I mean, hey, two's pretty good. <laughs> two's pretty solid. Yeah, that's 10, 10%, I guess. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10, 10, 15%. All right, so when it comes to the challenges, right, there's a lot of people talk about the failure rate and all that shit, right? Mm-hmm. So the failure rate, it's hot. Right? Yeah, it's, people, for sure. People are failing 95% of the challenges, right? Mm-hmm. What's your take on all this? I mean, it, it matches perfectly, you know, with the... The, the, the statistics of you know the traders losing you know if it was easy everybody would win you know what i mean yeah it, everybody would win but especially you know having that having that um the 30 days or whatnot or the 10 percent you know it makes people uh lose even more um but uh, do you okay so there's there's a lot of people in the chat right now they're talking mm-hmm. about remove the time limits this and that there's one firm that removed it i think there's two now um, what's your take? Like, do you think removing the time limits makes that big a difference? Like, what's the deal with that? I mean, I don't, I, sh- I don't, I think people would maybe lose even quicker. <laughs> It'd be like, oh, well, I can get funded by tomorrow. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, I really don't know too much about the time limits because I mean, you know, 30 like, days, it gives you a time frame because a lot of, most of these people are trying to get this done quick. Yeah. That's really what they're doing. Yeah. So if you remove the time limit, maybe they might even lose quicker because like oh i can get funded tomorrow or whatnot yeah or I it's, pass the it's tomorrow. such a crazy psychological like play this mm-hmm. prop firm that's doing the no time limits because the the play is they want to do this because they're like oh we're trader friendly this mm-hmm. and that right you guys are good here no limits no this no that and that's a good plan if you're, yeah. if you're a prop firm trying to market to people yep. but the reality is bro every 70 of people fail in the first two weeks so people are trying to get funded. Like, yeah, first, there's probably one out of fifty people who are trying to trade for ninety days. Yeah, you know. What I'm saying? I wonder what like, I wonder what the stats are on that for the people that go all, you know, the full thirty-five. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's pretty low. It's pretty low. Yeah. It's pretty low. The people that like you're saying make it to thirty-five days and then fail or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, like I said, seventy percent of people fail in the first two weeks. That's high. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like really high. And then yeah. I don't I don't think the amount of people that make it to the thirty-five days, but. People have the argument, maybe they're saying that because it's like, oh, there's pressure on me to do it in 35 days, whatever. But at the same time, in the next breath, they're like, hey, TFT, lower the first withdrawal. <laughs> and like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, okay, well, you clearly want to get funded as fast as possible and get paid out as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. So if you have no time limits, you're still going to be trying to get funded fast. I, I mean, I don't understand that the you know, lower the withdrawal length. I mean, <clears throat> if you make the money, there, there's, no, there's no goal you have to hit, you know? Right. So... 
if you have to wait 30 days, there's no goal regardless. Whatever money you made, you know, like for what I did, mm -hmm. you know, I made 6% in the first week and then, you know, I just didn't trade the account for three weeks. I know the money was there. I know I was going to get paid out. There's no pressure. There was no nothing. I just waited it out, you know, the rest of the three weeks and the money. So getting into now with the challenges, right? Um, what's the success like? Like what's your confidence level when it comes to taking a challenge at this point? Um, I feel pretty confident in my trading now, especially the way that, you know, that I trade. I typically like when I what I look for when I'm going to take a challenge is I actually wait for the markets, you know, to give me something nice. You know, like if it's ranging like it is right now, right now, you know, like the DXY is consolidating. I'm not going to take a challenge. I'm not going to trade too much. I'll wait for some good setups or some good potential setups to form. I'm like, OK, I'm going to buy the challenge and then I'm going to trade. Do you <clears throat> given that you're having some success, right? What are the goals with right now with trading? Trading wise, um, like some I realistic said, ones, realistic goals, realistic goals. I want to get the max allocation with you guys, you know, the 600,000 and then maybe go back with uh, another prop firm, get a little bit more and, you know, just trade and get some money from there. And then, like I like I said, maybe go another route and do business as well while I keep trading the accounts. You're not like hunting down the leaderboard, like looking at the leaderboard, like I want to be fucking number one on there. And I mean, stuff. it would be nice, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It would be nice. Like I I'm would dead. only, I would only do that, you know, if um, if I was funded, you know, multiple places. Okay. At once, I'm not just gonna go and risk it all if I'm just funded with one, you know, prop what, firm. What's your top three prop firms right now? Top you don't have three. to. You don't have to say TFT. It's not okay. We're not paying. Not paid active. I actually only have two. Okay. So it's, it's here. It's, F, it's it's you know TFT and FTMO. That's, no E eight. No E eight. You seem no. like E eight guy. Really? Yeah. A I've never bit. never used them before. Interesting. Okay. I just threw it in there, you know, on some of my uh, my Instagram stories to see mm -hmm. if people would vote for it. It did, didn't do very well. Didn't do well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. Was like four or five percent. There's a lot of new ones it. popping up all over the place. Man, you know, I think prop firm wise, I've tried three or four. I think, uh, you know, TFT. Mm -hmm. Well, FTMO has been the main one for sure. And then now TFT, I like TFT more than FTMO, you know, good pricing, good, a lot dumb. of better rules, you know, right. it's great pay, customer support. We're going to pay you fat after this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, but for real, I mean, if you look at just, you know, the pricings in general, you know, TFT is doing is good prices, man. It's competitively priced. Oh yeah. For I mean, sure. Especially, you know, me coming from only FTMO. <laughs> um, but I've been doing, I tried another small proffer. I'm not going to put the name out there. Uh, put on my Instagram story. I had made like twenty one thousand dollars with them, something mm -hmm. like that. I was pretty pretty excited. They didn't pay out. No, they did not pay out, man. They did Sheesh. not pay out. And I was in their, um, I was in their, um, their support box, you know, trying to get all the rules, making sure I was staying in the rules. They're like, yeah, you're good, okay, but I did this and I did that. Am I fine? Yeah, you'll still get paid out. This that. At the end of the day, they still didn't pay me out. So, like dude, 20. that sucks. Yeah, so. I've been telling everybody to avoid, you know, all these small ones. Just stick to the ones with the big names, with the good reviews. I've been, you know, at least for a while. Yeah. Because there's a lot of small, small firms popping up that, you know, say, oh, we could pass with a bot or this, this, and that. Yeah, it's just. Fuck that. My biggest tip um, for anyone that's, uh, you know, looking at these new prop firms. I mean, listen, TFT at one point was a new prop firm, right? Yeah. And we were trying to build a reputation as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to shit on these prop firms. Yeah. My biggest thing is like. TFT, look in the Discord, look in the payout section. You'll see every single certificate of every single payout. Yeah. Then we put out the stats on the monthly review, and we tell you how much we pay out. Yeah. There, we're there's not flubbing going on, right? Yeah. There's there's legitimate payouts going out to people all over the world, and because we're doing that, just from a universe like an energy perspective, like we're mm -hmm. legitimately making an impact. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it's real. So I think some of these newer prop firms they don't do a great job. And if any of you guys want to listen to this, if you're listening, yeah. don't do a great job of showcasing like that they're paying out mm -hmm. they don't post it they don't do interviews they don't do anything and then it's very skeptical like i'd be very skeptical if you look at a prop firm they don't show pay proof of payouts like yeah. the fuck's going on here yeah. right you're running a sham yeah for sure and especially i think um you know seeing who the ceo is for example the people putting their face out there you know or the yeah. prop firms that's really really big I agree. And I think, um, you know, there's been a lot of different approaches. Uh, some people have just run it anonymously. Mm -hmm. Some people have been more front facing with the being the CEO and stuff like that. Um, I also think it's interesting, you know, the CEOs that are traders. I mean, I think with TFT, the reason the, the people don't like real, some people don't realize this is like, I know so much mm -hmm. about what goes on. Yeah. Cause I was this, I was the trader and then I was the prop trader and then I was the business owner of 
courses and signals and yeah. trading challenges for people and everything and trade copying. And then now I was an affiliate for prop firms. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm an owner of the prop firms. Now I'm an owner of multiple. So it's like I really understand what's going on and who these people are. And I'm trying to stay as connected as possible. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like chatting with, you know, everyone and different people. I think some of the newer firms, they, um, they're just a bit disconnected. Yeah. I won't, sure. I won't say one firm, but they got some questionable advertising. They put mm -hmm. some weird videos out there and I'm like, w is this, is this a Viagra commercial or what, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen nothing weird like that. Yeah. Yet. I won't mention on this cause I'm not trying to get sued, but yeah, this is, uh, this is questionable, but, but yeah, the industry's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. And you know, from your perspective, what's, what's your outlook? Like where, what is prop trading? Where does it go? I think it's still new, you know what I mean? I mean, for the most part, you know, it really blew up, what, two two years ago, two and a half years ago? Yeah. So, I mean, that's relatively new. So, there's a lot, 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 lot to go still. And especially wow. with the, um, there's a lot of prop firms out there, right? But mm -hmm. I feel like there's only a few, or not a few, but like the majority are not, you know, the best choices. Mm -hmm. There's only a couple of best choices they mm -hmm. can go with. So, I feel like there's still, still competitive for the people that, um, are really going to be paying out the ones that have the best customer support and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's, I think it's going to grow a lot. I look at it like this, man. Like look at banks, like look at brokers, you know, look at these trading institutions. There's so many, right? Yeah. There's so many of them in the U S in the world, you know, all over the place. They all have customers because everyone needs a bank. Everyone, yeah. everyone wants a brokerage account. Financial advisors are doing, using financial institutions, all that stuff. Um, even comparing to like the sports gambling industry, right? Like how many casinos are there online, in person? Yeah, there's, there's just so many users that could use this thing. Um, so I think that like when people are like, oh, are you going to compete with this prop firm now that they changed this rule and that and this? And it's like, we are literally competing with ourselves. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, we study all the competitors. That's called competitive analysis. Like we're a business. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do. But we're competing with ourselves. We're trying to just be better than we've been yesterday. We're trying to be better than we were last week, the month before, the year before. And dude, there's gonna be customers. There's gonna mm -hmm. be traders. There's gonna be opportunities for all, for all the prop firms, the ones that yeah. are reputable, yeah. the ones that pay out. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? The the ones that are just, you know, big Shamu is gonna, eventually the Trojan horse is gonna be exposed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So under what conditions would you try a new prop firm? Oh, it's it's... It's, it's a little bit difficult to choose, you know, because if you already got a prop firm that works and you know they pay out, you know, the other prop firm has got to have a, a lot going for itself. And typically it's only a tweak here, a tweak there that's a little bit different. But um, but it's like your girl, dude. It's like your girlfriend, you know? Yeah, you, dude, you just got to Your first with, one's loyal. And, yeah, you know, just, even if you find one that's a little better, it's exactly. like you're going to you're gonna give up all this loyalty yeah. for this just shiny object. <laughs> yeah. Some people say a lot of people are falling for that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You That's know? why, you know, I stuck with FTMO for a long time. You know, I stuck with FTMO for a long time. Yep. And now I've switched to TFT and, yep. um, but took yeah. a, it took a while. It took, <laughs> it took me a while. <laughs> like, it took you would have expected time. me to switch a little yeah. sooner, right? But yeah. I mean, I was stuck with FTMO. This man. is the reality of life, guys. Even people in your network that you know, <laughs> they, they're they going to, it's business at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to waste their fucking money, so they're going <laughs> to wait it out. You, this uh, dude, Kimmel Trading, uh -huh. I don't know if you, do you know him? Rafael no. Kimmel. So he has like a YouTube thing. He's a, he's a popular person who trades and does uh, mm -hmm. reviews of prop firms and stuff. Yeah. When we launched, bro, I hit this guy up and I'm like, hey, man, like you're, you're a trustworthy guy. Mm -hmm. You know, review our prop firm and, you know, we'll give you an account. Review it. And he's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, look at the hell out. He's like, get the hell out of here. He's like, come back to me in a year or two years when you guys have payouts, this and that. Yeah. You know, when you're established and then I'll do the interview. I think, bro, it took a year and six months mm -hmm. to end up having him trade on TFT, start to do videos. Um, he got a payout recently. He's coming out, I think, for the summit, mm -hmm. and he's gonna do. We're gonna do an in-person pod. Um, but dude, it took so long, and that dude, yeah. people in the industry, you know, there's those entry-level people who will just fucking fall for the girl, you know, yeah, go any shiny ball, go for just, it. But yeah. then there's the people that legitimately want to trade with mm -hmm. real, real firms. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you really don't want like, especially with my last experience with that one firm, twenty-one thousand dollars. I mean, you don't want that headache of thinking you're gonna make that money and no. then. You're not getting it. It's like dang. no. And what's what did they tell you? The reason? 
No, they didn't tell me. They said, they said not, they, Javier's don't get paid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They said, they said um, uh, consistency rule. You broke a consistency rule, but they didn't say which one. They wanted your birth certificate. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, oh my yeah, God. So TFT. TFT is the one now. So. All right, so um, off topic. So the world, or not off topic, but the world is changing, right? The world mm-hmm. is pretty crazy right now. Yeah. And uh, econom- economically, right, the U.S. is in shambles, inflation, the crypto market crash, now it's back, the stock market crash, you know, all these different variables. Where do you fall when it comes to the financial crisis, all this stuff, like the world changing order, right? Like what's your perspective on all this? Perspective as in like what I think as is going to happen. Yeah, like what's going to happen with the US? Like how does it relate to prop trading? Does it help it? Does it hurt it? Um, you know, it re- it's really tough to call what's going to happen. Um, but if something bad were to happen, um, like really, really bad, I don't know if it'd be a good thing or a bad thing for the prop industry, you know, because I feel like it might be good, actually. You know, people are going to have less money, you know, per se, Mm -hmm. yes, but if they don't have a job, they're going to be looking for how to make money. And they're going to be looking at how to make money online, especially. So, you know, I think it might be potentially a good thing for prop firms. I think they might grow from it. I think more chaos in the world, the more, to your point, there is going to be the the desire, the need for alternative sources of income. I mean, look, look at, uh, you know, Andrew Tate. I don't even know. What is his thing called? His program? I don't, I don't even know what it's called. But it's all about, like, alternative sources of income. Yeah. He's like, I don't know. I, don't, I actually have no idea what it's called. Yeah. But it's it's interesting because, you know, just like drop shipping and all these other, uh, you know, different ways to make money online. Mm-hmm. Dude, Forex and pro- prop firms are making Forex a legitimate source of income. For sure, yeah. like a legitimate alternative to all these things, because I love it because a meritocracy, you get paid what you deserve. Mm-hmm. It's facts. Yeah, it's just the way it is. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that's a beautiful thing. Like I think the goal for me was when I was first trading, I was like, I feel as though I'm working really hard. Like there's got to be a lane for me to get in where it's just about me versus me. Yeah, I think with TFT, we're we're truly. We're truly doing that. And you're one of the people that are making it happen you yeah, know, for, for yourself. Sure. You know, you're getting paid, getting payouts, trading challenges, you know, leading the community, leading a movement. Um, so you're one of the people. That's why you're here. Yeah. At, at the end of the day. Um, so we're going to wrap it up. Any last uh, tips, advice for people out there, traders? Uh, one tip that, man, I tell everybody all the time, you know, and I, I said it probably three, four times already. You know, it's just... Re- Trading wise, risk management, like please, please, like I can't, <laughs> I can't say it's enough. Risk management is the most number one most important thing. You know, that's all I gotta say. Are you gonna be coming to the summit? Um, I'm gonna see if I can come out here. Yeah. Yeah, you should come for yeah. sure. It's it's a great place to network with people. Some people are like hesitant to come, and I'm not paid to say this. Like, yeah. I'm not like at all. We're we're paying to go actually, mm-hmm. but people are hesitant to come because like gurus are leading the charge, whatever. Yeah. But it legitimately is a place that's gonna have a lot of traders that you're gonna want to meet. Other people that are you know doing courses, doing this, doing signals, trading challenges. There's like this whole wave of prop traders now, fucking on Instagram, yeah. Twitter, and all this stuff. And a lot of them are going. So yeah, if you can come by, if anyone out there is listening, if you guys are passionate about trading, you know, come to the FX Summit June 9th through 11th. We're going to have a booth there, um, so come say hi. Check it out. Don't bother me or anything. <laughs> no, but it'll be a good opportunity for you guys. So, yeah, man, thanks for being on the pod. Thank you for Fuck having yeah. me. Excited for you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, we're good.